back. Thanks for coming. Um, we're here with JT and Nate, uh, both baseball players that are trying to uh, move through the system, right? And we're talking a little about the harness and, and what it accomplishes for a hitter or pitcher. If we break that down, guys, bottom line is this. You are trying to move energy into a baseball pitch. You are trying to move energy into your bat and then into the baseball, right? The guy who moves up is the one who is most efficient with energy movement throughout their kinetic chain reaction, as well as the one who has the most power and, and velocity and that kind of stuff, which is tools, right? But at the end of the day, when you break it down organically to the most organic level, it is energy movement, right? How do you take an energy load or create a load, support it, and then use it at the right time, right? Three things, create, support, and use it. And that's essentially, guys, how we have built the VL harness, right? On human movement, because that's what athletic movement is built upon. So if we look at human movement, and I'm gonna break it down really simple in layman's terms here. Obviously, we can get really scientific, but we're not right here. But in human movement, when we're just walking, because that would be the slowest um, aspect, or one of the slowest aspects of creating energy, supporting it and then using it right and then if we move that quicker and quicker then we can put it into um, sports or athletic movement so when i walk if i walk this way and and i push energy before my heel gets into the ground right and that's basically moving forward i'm going to walk like this which doesn't look right because it isn't right i'm not moving energy efficiently and when i'm doing that i'm really wanting to dissipate the energy because there's too much load on the front and you can see I'm dissipating it or allowing it to escape by doing this too much, right? Because I can't walk like this with straight legs. In order to do that properly, I have to kind of dissipate energy or have that front knee flex and then a little leg extension, but there's too much knee flex and I'm coming forward. So I'm creating energy, but I'm not supporting it. So how do I support it? Is I go heel plant first and then use the energy. Heel plant first, use the energy, right? So that's how we walk, right? A person that walks properly is create, support, use, right? Create, so it would be create, support, use. Create, support, use. It's really hard to do it slow, but if we do, all right, everybody's seen somebody walk. This is how we walk. Guys, people who have issues with knees a lot of times are starting to bend forward too much, right? Because it creates a lot of pressure. So that would be the idea in your kinetic chain reaction. The more leakage you have or the more uh, movement deficient you are, the more energy leakage you're going to create. And physics says that for reaction there's an equal opposite reaction. You can use Newton's laws, there's three of them. Um, physics theorems, energy laws, all combining into these statements using common sense. If I create and if I create energy, right, which would be my load, but I don't support it, there's too much load going on right here. So what do I have to do? It's going to subconsciously have to be dissipated or escaped. That is a physics theorem, right? How does it do it? Physics theorem also says if um, energy is going to escape, it's going to escape in an opposite move right in opposite reaction which we all know in kinesiology if we have too big of an energy load in our, in our in our kinetic chain reaction it's going to be this way on a horizontal that is premature so it'd be this guy right here it'd be getting top heavy and pulling it'd be that guy that does this too much and then he's not going to continually go forward common sense he says he's going to pull off because we've got a big load right here this is a big load or a big weight that we've got to counterbalance. That's why when you see good hitters, they counterbalance this, and I'm exaggerating, but they have to actually counterbalance the head. Guys can get however they want, they can get whatever, but when they start to bring the barrel around, which is the big load on there, they have to counterbalance it, right? Every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. For pitching, same thing. I can't get here and continually go forward. I've got to actually counterbalance that, right? I can come forward, but I've got to counterbalance at some point, which would be out front, head back, okay? Pitchers have more of a slope to deal with, and there's too many things to talk about here, but bottom line is I need to stay counterbalanced. I need to be proportionate in my energy loads. 
and I have to create balance force, all right? Balance force is this one thing. Think of tug of war, okay? One guy pulling, one guy pulling. Same thing, we're pulling, pulling, pulling. At some point, someone lets go, and then there's explosive power that way, right? And that essentially is what baseball is required because it's just not creating power, it's creating explosive power or explosive power. And that's the idea behind the VL uh, harness. It gives you movement efficiency and it'll give you the sensory feedback when you're deficient or sensory feedback when you're efficient. Does that make sense, guys? Cool. Thanks for joining in. I appreciate your time.